Deej Leg here, telling stories from my book, Cab Log, Diary of a Cab Driver, Five Years on the Night Shift, Nonfiction, All True Stories. This one is called The One-Armed Man, who is a recurring character in the book because he was a regular in the cabs and often utilized the services of the cab company in Lafayette, Louisiana. On this particular night, about 2 a.m. in the morning, I got a call from the dispatcher to pick up at a local bar called DJ's, which is a little hole in the wall located in an industrial park. Just a run of the mill, a little hole in the wall, man, nothing special about it. So I roll up to the bar, park, honk, nobody comes out. I kill the cab, lock it up, walk inside. Place is nearly empty except for a bartender and a few patrons kind of scattered about, one of whom is actually the one-armed man. He's perched at a far corner of the bar on a bar stool, just chilling there. I go up to the bartender. Hey dude, who called the cab? He points over at the one-armed man. One-armed man is watching us. He kind of idly raises his one good arm and kind of waves it in our direction. A one-armed man's an interesting dude. He's probably mid-40s. Looks like an FM radio DJ from the 80s. He's got blow-dried hair, a button-up tucked-in shirt, and clean iron slacks with a crease. I walk up to him. Hey, buddy, I'm your cab driver. I'm here to take you home wherever you want to go. The one-armed man mumbles something underneath his breath. The God, that I can't really make out like <laughs> so I ask him what's, what's that buddy excuse me he's like Psst. so your cab driver so what big fucking deal okay one armed man is drunk I can tell already and he's kind of an asshole so nonetheless I just smile I remain polite you know okay I'm outside I tell him I'm parked I'm gonna go wait for you out in the cab so I walk toward the exit, and he drunkenly follows me. We exit the bar, approach the cab. I open the rear door of the cab to let him in. Like, you know, hey, I'm gonna be nice. He's got one arm, maybe he needs some help getting in. And he's got a few drinks, so I'm trying to be a nice guy. To the, to the one-armed man, he's got one arm. I'm trying to help him out. The one-armed man immediately looks at me, and he says something like, absolutely not. And uh, what's the problem? He says, I always ride up front. One armed man shoves that rear door closed and arrogantly tugs open the front passenger side door and climbs in the cab. We roll out. I ask him, as I do everybody, where to, buddy? He says, I'll show you. So we roll on. The one armed man lights up a cigarette and starts taking long, self absorbed, pensive drags on it and stares out the window kind of appearing mildly annoyed with me I'm guessing so we're driving around and then he leans over to me and he says where are you from uh, I'm from here I say and he's like where the fuck is here uh, I say but here is in Lafayette the town we're in right now this is where I'm from this is where I live pay taxes do my thing you know no, I mean, like, where are you from? He asks again. And I tell him, look, dude, I'm from here. I live here, I work here, and I've got a rule. And that rule is I only answer the same question twice. And then after that, you're on your own. Oh, is that how it is, huh? He says. He doesn't like that answer at all, by the way. And uh, he turns to me and he says, uh, what kind of shit is that? And I say, uh, I don't know. And I don't really know what you're asking me. So the one-armed man goes silent for a few minutes, kind of puffing on his cigarette, and blowing it out the window like he's some kind of mob boss from the early 80s. He's not digging my shit. A couple minutes later, he turns to me again and he says, what kind of music do you listen to? And I say, music, huh? I don't know, all kinds of music. I like whatever, you know? I like metal. Metal? What do you know about metal? You ever heard of a band called Gangster? 
<laughs> and I kind of do vaguely uh, remember, recall a band from around here called Gangster. Uh, they were like an 80s hair metal band who had their heyday in the 80s. Yeah, well, they were great. They kicked ass. Not like this pussy shit you guys listen to now. Complete silence. I don't even respond to him. And in the silence, one-armed man just keeps smoking his cigarette and blowing it out the window. <sighs> kind of hissing. Annoyed. And at this time, he starts giving me directions to his house, you know. Like, he doesn't want to give me his address. He just wants to, he wants to direct me, tell me what to do, how to get there. So it's, it's like, left! I said, take a left! Look, you're going too fast. I told you, go left, take a right, and then go straight. And of course he's drunk and he's giving me the directions in a scattered manner and just being a prick. No, I said go straight, then left. You're not listening to me, dude. You're not a very good cab driver. I ride these cabs all the time and you're, just, you're not good, you're new, I can tell. In fact, you suck. You gotta find a new line of work, dude. You're not good. So, after about, you know, five minutes of this stuff, uh, of tolerating his bullshit, now I'm really annoyed with him. And I just pull the cab over and stop it. And I'm like, look, buddy, don't tell me how to drive the cab. And I won't tell you how to blow dry your fucking hair. The one-armed man looks at me and he goes, what kind of shit is that? No reply. We finally get to his house. I stop. He looks over and says, Thank God this shit is over. Uh, okay. The fare is seven bucks, buddy. Have a good night. He says, wait here. I gotta go inside and get the money. Okay. So I'm guessing the one-armed man drank all his money for the night at the bar and he ain't got nothing to pay the cab, so he's got to go inside and obviously go get it. So he exits the cab, walks to his house, goes inside. I sit outside in the cab and wait. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten minutes goes by. I'm still sitting out there waiting in the fucking cab for this dude. For his Weasley $7 fare. It's like, I got shit to do, dude. That's a long time. I'm not making money and doing my job while you're farting off in your house making me wait. Not cool. Nonetheless, he finally comes out. I see him open the door. He starts walking toward the cab. He motions to me for me to roll down the window, which I do. I power down the passenger side window. He walks up to the cab, and like some feudal overlord throwing rotten turnips to a peasant, the one-armed man tosses his seven one-dollar bills in the window. And they blow around in the air and kind of fall on the seat and the floorboard and whatnot. I'm like, okay, that's classy. It's real classy, dude. The one-armed man turns on his heel and kind of pops his shoulders and arrogantly kind of struts away. As if to say, why don't you fuck off now, loser? I may have lost my arm, but never my pride, bro. Later. Look at this motherfucker, bro. Fucking 80s blow dried hair, FM radio DJ lounge lizard at a golf club looking motherfucker. Walking around at 2.30 in the morning, one damn arm looking like he's selling shoes to grandmas at a mall, at the hood mall, with his sleeve flapping around in the breeze, like he playing flag football by himself in the middle of the night, nobody to fuck with. And you, you know, you get the picture. So, I roll out of there and I uh, continue on fielding calls on the night shift. Roughly about, I don't know, 15 minutes later, I get a call from the dispatcher. He says, number four, which is my number. Driver four, uh, I, I got a complaint from a customer about you just now. And I start to laugh to myself because I can kind of tell what's coming. So I call him back. <laughs> Who complained? What's going on? 
and he calls back. Uh, yeah, that guy you uh, dropped off, uh, the guy with the one arm, yep. Yeah, he's a regular, and uh, he said you were really rude and drove uh, bad on the road, so I gotta follow this one with the boss. 10-4. Look at this motherfucker, bro. Rude. I drove bad. What kind of shit is that? Damn, one arm man. What a trip. What an odd dude. Entertaining, but odd. And that was it. I finished out the rest of the shift, thinking about that one-armed man. Some bitch kind of got to me. Sometimes people get to you like that. True story. The one-armed man from my book, Cab Log, Diary of a Cab Driver, about my five years on the night shift, 2003 to 2008. Cheers.